Well, it's great to be here and hearing about what God is doing in many parts of our world and just want to lift up His name and praise God. And um, it means a lot that all of us are here together going for the same vision that God, God has called us. Remember a story about a preaching class in seminary. Uh, every student has to preach to get a credit and each one takes turn to preach and everyone else in the class will have a peer critique as well as his professor will give him credit for his preaching. And this one particular student, he was not ready to preach, he did not prepare well. So he didn't know what to do. He stood on the pulpit and he said, do you know what I'm going to preach today? And everybody says, no. And he said, neither do I. And he stepped down. Everybody got shocked. No one has done that before. So the professor got really mad at him and gave him one more chance the following week. So the following week came and here again the same student stood up on the pulpit and everybody was so tense, you know why. And he said, do you know what I'm going to preach today? And all his friends in the class, they all said no last time and gave him trouble. So this time they all said yes. And the, the student says, well everybody knows that I don't need to preach and he stepped down. Everybody was shocked. So finally, he was given the third and final chance to preach. So the following week, he stood up once again, and everybody was so eager to respond because he didn't know what to do with him. And the, the students came up and he said, do you know what I'm going to preach today? And by this time, the whole people were split in half. Some of them said, yes, they know. Some of them said, they don't know. And the student says, for those who know, please tell those who do not know that he stepped down. I don't know whether that really happened or not, but from that point we say, mission is just like that. For those who know, tell those who do not know. Those who have experienced the love of God and experienced the vitality of God, tell those who do not know. And that's what the mission is all about. And that's what Christ has said in Matthew 28. Go ye therefore, make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey all I have commanded you. And that great commission is given to all of us. And that's the reason why here we are together. We know from this scripture from Matthew 28, the very famous the Bible verse on Great Commission, that there's a four main verbs and participles that stands out from this passage. The first important and the most important verb of that passage is making disciples. Disciples are the people who belong to God, who live by God's value and live out by God's word view. Making disciples, the first important verb of that passage. Second is going. The Bible translates as if make disciples as you go. So that that becomes very important second verb, verb in that passage. Third one is, and fourth one is about the same, is to baptize them and also teaching. So that making disciples, going, baptize them, and teaching. The four verbs, we are all aware how important those are in that passage as Christ has mentioned on Great Commission. But tonight, from not only just the four verbs that is important in the same passage, we can also find four alls that continually repeated in this passage. We would like to take a look at that and once again as a reminder of what God has given for our great commission. First all comes from verse 18. That's all authority. 
But Jesus said, All authority has given to me in earth, in heaven. But he says, The authority that he has, that it has so much authority, that it so stands out from heaven and on earth. The Bible tells us that talking about the basis of our mission, the foundation of mission, that God calls us in His authority. We know when Jesus was teaching, people were surprised. And they said, you know, He has such a great authority. We know that He was calming the whole storm. And people were surprised and saying, you know, He has authority to even let the nature obey Him. And we know that He cast demons out. We know that He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He has authority, and the same authority, what Bible says, that all authority is given unto me, and you go therefore. The Bible tells us that God has given His authority to send us to go. And we're not going in our name, we are going in God's name. We are going in His authority. That his name and his power and his authority is the foundation and basis for our mission. We're not going in our name or let our name to be known. We're not depending on our own strength, our own power, but the power of God and his authority. That's what Acts chapter 4, 14 to 12 says. There's no other name under the heaven by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus. There is a power in the name of Jesus. There's a salvation in the name of Jesus. There's a healing in the name of Jesus. We go in God's name, in His authority, and that's what all authority is all about. All authority is given unto me, so you go therefore. His authority is in us. We go in His authority, and that's where we are. The foundation, the basis of our missions. Second, all comes out in verse 19. It says, Go ye therefore make disciples of all nations. It is the focus of our mission. It's not just the people around us. It's not the people that we feel comfortable with. It's not the people that we can easily accessible. But rather the Bible tells us the people, all nations. Why God is telling us that we need to go and make disciples of all nations? I think the reason why is because all nations are very much in the heart of God. He always thought about all nations, all people. He wants all people to come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. We know from Revelation chapter 7 the great multitude are gathering together. The Bible tells us the people from every nation, every tribe, every people group, every language, they all come together singing, Salvation belongs to the Lamb who sits on the throne. That's the day that we look forward to see the multitude of great nations, all nations are coming together and they are the very heart of God. I remember hearing Someone says, when I'm really Christian unless our heart is broken by the same thing which broke the heart of Christ. Our heart is moved by the same thing that moved the heart of God. They are the all nations. And that's what Bible tells us we got to go all nations. And I think the very reason that we are here today as well that we are looking forward to see God's focus that all nation and all people. The world has become so closer to one another. These days, you know, I'm surprised how we have become really a global villages. You know, 
the development of the Facebook, I don't know any of you guys have some. I have planted church in Kenya 10 years ago. But now, you know, time passed 10 years. But I have a friend request from the very congregation member that when I was there in Kenya 10 years ago when I preached, when I planted church, I was so surprised. I don't know how they found me, but I'm looking at my friends, the people that I worked with 10 years ago in Kenya when I planted church. They all became my friends. And I'm realizing, you know what? The world has become so close, talking about globalization. We have so much access to one another. We can reach out and be able to really know what's going on around. And there's so many people traveling back and forth. And the very reason that we put our focus on, the Bible says, the all nations, the all people, the very much of the heartbeat of God. The Bible tells us that all nations, that's where we focus on our mission. I believe, especially in Asia, you know in Asia that has the most population than any other continents, and yet we have least evangelized in population. Yet by God's grace we have most growing churches in Asia. You know over the years that we've been depend on many part of Western world to help us to evangelize our nation. And that's what missionaries were there for in many ways. But I believe in God's timing, in His grace. I believe that Asian churches are rising up. And Asian churches are being responsible to reaching out other part of Asia. And I think the Asian church has to take this call for the evangelizing the whole nations, and especially on Asia. I go back to the very word of God saying that we go for all nations beyond our comfort zone and looking at people where God is looking at that our heart will be moved by the same thing that moved God's heart all nations people third all comes out in verse 20 of 58, 19, all that I commanded you. All that I commanded you. This is what Christ has said to his disciples. As he departing from them, he says, teach them to obey all I have commanded you. What God has commanded us from the scripture it's God's word it's the gospel it's the Bible it's the Bible that transforms people's lives it's the gospel that saves people it's the word of God transform our family our society and our nations the word of God has power to transform and this tells us the message that we have it has to be the message of God, the God's Word. There's many other messages we may bring to all nations. And sometimes we come out with our own strategies, coming out our economic plans and education plans and many other strategies, but utmost what Bible tells us Teach them to obey all I have commanded you. The word of God, the gospel, has power to save. That's what Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God who believes in him. I remember a story of Korean early mission time. That this one guy was walking by in his village and this Western missionary was passing out the Bible. Obviously, all Korean people, they did not respond to the missionaries. They want to receive the Bible, which is free. And this particular one was passing by and was grabbed by the missionary a new Bible. And he was about to throw out 
the Bible that, that he was handed on his hand. And yet, when you look into the Bible, you know, the inside paper looks pretty decent, nice, thin. And there was a long time ago when Korea was so poor and they didn't have toilet papers like we do now. So he thought, brilliant idea. Why don't I use this for my toilet paper? It's all packed and you can use it every day. So instead of throwing away his Bible, he put his Bible in his toilet. And every day when he go to the toilet, he used that toilet paper from the Bible, starting from Genesis 1, <laughs> Genesis 2. And he used about a month. And you know how it is in toilet, you need to have a good timing, you know what I'm saying? If you took it out your toilet paper too early and you're not done, what do you do? You're bored and wait. And that happened when he was taking some part of Leviticus. And timing wasn't so good, so he had a little time on his hand. So he started reading Leviticus, the piece of paper that he took out from the Bible. And the very moment in that toilet, he believed in Christ and became a Christian. Did you know someone can actually become a Christian from Leviticus? It happened. So he later on became a preacher and he has a Bible without Genesis. That's his souvenir. The Bible, the Word of God, is the message about mission. It transforms, changes people, changes our society. It is the hope of our world and our people. The gospel, the message of God, all that I have commanded you. Final all. Actually coming out verse 20, but it's not actually, you cannot find, but instead of all, you can find always. Lo, I'll be with you always to the very ends of the age. Always, all the time. It is the blessing of mission. Christ is not just sending us with his authority. That would have been good. He's not simply just sending us not to all nations. And he's also help teaching us, making us, and telling us, to teach to obey all that he has commanded us. But he said, I'm going to be with you always, with you, all the time. It is God's protection. It is God's provision. It is God's presence. It is God's promise. I'll be with you all the time. That's what the book of Hebrews says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Jesus is the same from yesterday and today and forever. And he says, I'm going to be with you. You are not alone. How great, how encouraging this is to know that Christ is with us as we go in his authority to all nations teach them all things from the scripture. He is with us all the time. I remember a story about David Livingstone. In 1896, he said, he's been serving the Lord in Africa for 56 years by that time. He was 83 years old and he said, you know what, it was difficult, the culture and language in Africa but the one thing that helped me the most is the promise of God from the scripture and where he said, I'm with you always. The task is not left alone for us. It's his authority we go. It's the all nations, the very heart of God. All the things that God has commanded us is the message we have promise of God, the blessing of God, that He is going to be 
with us all the time. All the time. And that's what God says. Go and make disciples of all nations. Some time ago, when I was designed to go to Kenya as a missionary, we felt God's strong call as our family. We were there in three years, ministering in Kenya, Nairobi. And um, my wife and I was all geared toward that, and we're happy God has called us. The only thing that has really, really bothered us is our children. At that time, the three of our children, their age was five and a half, three and a half, one and a half years old. And the biggest concern that we had was, you know, it is okay for myself and my wife can go to mission, but just because we are in states, U.S. by that time, taking our three of our children to go to Nairobi, Kenya, what if they dislike Kenya? And because of that, they dislike God, and they dislike mission. So it was our mission, of mission itself, was that how can we communicate to our children the mission that we're going to Kenya is something that we love to do, and great privilege that we have. So we've been just struggling and praying about that. And then God gave very good thoughts. It was at that time the famous Disney movie was on town. It was Lion King. I don't know if any of you guys watch Lion King. It's a great movie. My kids loved it. They just watched so many times and memorized every song was there. There's a Simba, which is a lion. And there's a Pumba. And there's Timon. And and all those, you know, they love Simba Lion. And I said, Guys, do you want to see Simba? And they said, yes. I said, you know, in Kenya, there's lots of Simba. And they said, they want to go to Kenya so badly. They said, let's go now. <laughs> so it was working well. We were happy and preparing until the last week for our departure. We had to go to clinic to take the shots. And my oldest daughter, Christina, knew we were going to clinic to take the shots. And the other kids don't know, so they're just fine. But all this one start crying because she was afraid to get her shots. So while I was driving, and Christina asked me the very question that I've been avoiding so well, because of Lion King. And she said, Dad, why are we going to Kenya? And she said, why are we taking the shots? So I said, you know, Christina, in Kenya, there's bad germs, and if you don't get this shot, you may get sick, so that's why we got to get these shots. And then she asked, then I don't want to go to Kenya. Why are we going to Kenya? That was an unexpected question. It popped right before my eyes, and I was panicking. How should I answer? You know, just like any other pastors, when you don't know exactly how to answer, you respond this way. Christina, it's because God told us to go. <laughs> I knew the answer wasn't good, but that just came out. God told us to go. To make a long story short, she got her shots, she got some chocolate candy, she got happy later on. The story happened the following day, as I was walking out of my house, I saw Christina talking to her brother, David. He was three and a half years old. Christina was standing, David was sitting down, and Christina asked David, David, do you know why we're going to Kenya? The very question that she asked. And obviously David had no idea, he said, I don't know. <laughs> And Krishna said to David, it's because God told us to go. <laughs> the very words that I said to her, she told her brother. 
And the very moment, as I listened to what she said, there's, I don't know, just two things, just something hot just came from the depth of my heart. One, as a physical father, you know those innocent children like them, I have to bring them to Kenya and make them suffer. I felt so sorry for them as a father. And my tears just popped up and dropped down. And as I holding on my tears, there's another message coming into my heart and saying, that's right, Peter, we're going. God told us to go. Go. And be helpful. All authority is given unto me and I'm giving unto you. Go. With my authority. To all nations. Teach them all. I command you. Don't you ever forget. And I'll be with you. story with the young Moody. When he finally came to Christ and later on when he was coming in his life he met a one street evangelist on the park. And in his journey John the young Moody says you know I cannot forget what he said. He said bluntly to the young Moody the world has not seen what God can do through, for, by, in a man who is totally consecrated to God. The Moody, he said in his journal, came home at that night and he thought. He didn't say a smart man. He didn't say a rich man. He said, Amen. And I am a man. And by the grace of God, I want to be that man. You know, the world has not seen what God can do through, for, by, in a man. People of God who is committed to go in His authority to all nations. George Whitfield used to say, just give me ten people who hate nothing but the sin, who love nothing but the God, I'll change the whole world upside down. General William Booth, the founder of Salvation Army, when his daughter, or the planet church, didn't do well, asked advice to his father, General William Booth sent a telegram to his daughter Two words. Try tears. Brothers, sisters in Christ. The God has whole world in his hands. And he's sending us to go in my name to all nations. The people who are so close to his heart. Because we have message of God. They can transform their lives, bring the meaning and reality of their true happiness. And He is with us to the end of our ages. Go be therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all I command you. Behold, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. May God be glorified as we committed our lives to go and make disciples 